How's it going folks? I'm Duz with DuzFit and this is the brand new Skosh Rhythm Plus 2.0 arm heart rate monitor, the follow up to the popular Rhythm Plus that Skosh released over six years ago. The original Rhythm Plus, it's a great heart rate monitor, provides more accurate heart rate than what you can get out of a wrist based heart rate sensor and it's great for folks who don't necessarily want to wear a chest heart rate strap since these heart rate sensors are designed to be worn on the upper arm or the forearm. And with the 2.0 it has a longer battery life, a better waterproof rating as well as an updated heart rate sensor which is the same one that's going to be found on their high end Rhythm 24. And you can actually think of the Rhythm Plus 2.0 as a Rhythm 24 without a lot of the bells and whistles. So the Rhythm 24 it does have stuff like onboard memory, you can see your heart rate zones via some LEDs and it also has heart rate variability but some people simply just need a good accurate reliable heart rate sensor with some long battery life and that's what the Rhythm Plus 2.0 is all about. So I've been testing the Rhythm Plus 2.0 for about two months or so I think at this point. So I've got lots of data to share in this in-depth review where I used it for running, mountain biking, strength training, road biking, as well as indoor cycling, just so you can get an idea if this device is gonna be appropriate for your type of activities. So if this video does help you out at all, don't be shy about hitting that like button down below as it definitely helps the channel out a lot. So if we take a look at the original Rhythm Plus, the new Rhythm Plus 2.0 and the Rhythm 24 all side by side, you can see that the 2.0 resembles the 24 much more than the original. It has the same shape, it uses the exact same bands as the 24, as well as the same Valencell heart rate sensor, which is a custom integration that uses two green LEDs and one yellow LED, which is supposed to accommodate for different skin tones because some LED colors work better than others for light versus dark skin and vice versa. And we'll get into the accuracy of that heart rate sensor here in just one bit. Another thing that the Rhythm Plus 2.0 gets from the Rhythm 24 is going to be the 24 hour battery life which is up from the 8 hours that's found on the original Rhythm Plus and the Rhythm Plus 2.0 also uses the exact same charger as the Rhythm 24 again which is going to be different than the original. It's also IP68 water resistant which is up from the IP67 rating from the original Rhythm Plus so it'll be able to withstand all the sweat and you can submerge it down to 3 meters and although you could swim with it, it doesn't have onboard memory like the Rhythm 24 does so it's not necessarily designed for swimming. For connectivity it has both Bluetooth as well as Ant Plus which means that you can pair this to pretty much any device out there and you can use the Bluetooth and Ant Plus at the same time but just note it only has one Bluetooth connection. So you'll be able to use the 2.0 with all sorts of fitness apps like Strava, Zwift, Map My Fitness, as well as Scotia's own Rhythm Sync app where you can view your heart rate in real time along with your heart rate zones and you'll also be able to use the app to update the firmware if an update is available. The 2.0 also has a 100 foot wireless range so this can be useful in the case where you don't necessarily want to wear a watch during your workout so you essentially can just pair it up, start your activity, put your watch aside, and as long as you're within 100 feet of your watch you can still collect your heart rate data. For wearability and comfort, the 2.0 is wide and flat, which makes it comfortable to wear and you don't have to worry about the sensor accidentally flipping while you're working out. It attaches with the exact same band as the 24, which uses a hook closure on both sides of the sensor versus the Velcro found on the original. There's definitely some convenience of the older Velcro style for sure, but there's also the risk of the Velcro flap getting caught on something like when you're putting on a long sleeve shirt, which could loosen the entire strap. But overall, I haven't had any problems with the hook closure system that Skosh uses on the 24 as well as the 2.0. And there's a ton of different color options for the band, so you can purchase the 2.0 with a black or blue band which comes in a box like this, and then there's also an Amazon exclusive grey color band which comes in a box like this. And then for the more wild color options there's purple as well as pink, and then green which I'm particularly fond of. Oh and then one more quick little thing before we get into the heart rate accuracy is that Skosh also sent out this universal charging case for me to check out along with the 2.0 and this charging case is kind of neat. So first off it serves as a nice little carrying pouch for your 2.0 along with the band or bands and you can even stash your charging cable inside but it also has an 860 milliamp hour battery inside so you can charge your 2.0 while on the go along with any other USB type accessories because it also includes this little nice little USB type A to USB type C and micro USB cable right there. So I thought this was a neat little accessory and I'll have affiliate links down in the description below where you can check out all of the prices on all of this stuff. But now let's get on to what's really important here and that's going to be the accuracy of the 2.0. So the original Rhythm Plus, that was an extremely accurate heart rate sensor and I had very few complaints about it. The Rhythm 24, it wasn't quite as accurate as the original Rhythm Plus though, but it was still very usable in most scenarios. So let's see how the 2.0 works out. So what I'm going to do is start with some easier tests like indoor cycling and road biking, then I'm going to move to some more challenging tests like running and mountain biking, and then we'll wrap things up with the most challenging activity which is going to be strength training. So as you can see here from this indoor cycling session is that the 2.0 was spot on. This is kind of boring actually and there was not one spot in this entire workout where it didn't line up with the other heart rate sensors. 
And then on this ride, these were some intervals. And again, nearly perfect for the entire workout where it tracked each interval quite well. However, at the beginning, there was a slight delay in acquiring heart rate, a little blip here and an ever so slight blip here. But overall, these are pretty good results. Now, indoor cycling is one of the easiest activities for a heart rate sensor to get right, just because there's very few variables involved. But now let's take it outside where we introduce more stuff like vibrations as well as bumps in the road. So here's where we can see there's gonna be a little bit more variance in some spots. So at the beginning, it dipped lower than the other sensors on this portion right here and here, but then it locked on pretty good for most of the ride. On the tail end of the ride, it had a few areas where it wandered a little, but these were pretty momentary. Now to introduce even more noise, let's take a look at an example for mountain biking where there's more potential for an optical heart rate sensor to fail just because of all the bouncing and jarring movement. And what we can see is that the 2.0 did quite well, actually really well. There were a few little wobbles at the beginning, but for the rest of the session, this was spot on. So for running, first off, ignore this little portion right here at the beginning, which is where I accidentally paused the Chorus Apex Pro, which I was using with the chest heart rate strap. But for the rest of the run, things were pretty good. There was a small spike right around halfway through where it was about seven beats per minute high, but that was momentary. And overall, this was pretty much what I like to see. But now let's get to the hardest activity for an optical heart rate sensor, and that's gonna be weight training. So what we can see is that the 2.0 did pretty darn well, although not perfect. It was a little off at the beginning of the workout, but was pretty in line for these sets of bench presses, but the last set was a little bit wobbly, but you can see some wobbles from all the sensors at this point. Through the middle of the workout, during some lat pull downs and bicep curls, it did well, but then it had some issues with these tricep extensions right here, but it was very much in line with these high intensity efforts right at the end, other than being a little bit behind on the last set. And this test is a repeat of the exact same exercises on the last session, just for comparison. So ignore this little spike from the Tech Rex right at the beginning, but you can see some collective wonkiness by all the sensors on the bench presses. But what was interesting is that I saw some dips again during the tricep extensions. And if you just wanna have an idea of how this all compares to a wrist-based optical heart rate sensor, here's some examples. But overall, the 2.0 does a good job and it does what it's supposed to do and is a good option for an arm heart rate sensor. They didn't necessarily need to update the original, but it is nice to see that longer battery life as well as the improved water rating with the 2.0. Anyhow, if you liked the video or if you found this video useful, make sure to hit that like button down below and also subscribe to the channel for plenty more sports tech videos that are coming soon. In the meantime, have fun out there and we will see you in the next video.